So, Mrs. Stephanie Lancaster has finally met her match. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny. Now, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information in the description box, as well as like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. Now, this is Ambition Season 1, Episode 17, and the name of this episode is Through the Wire. This was another fire ass episode and next week is the season finale i can't wait um man this first season of ambitions has truly been phenomenal shout out to will packer jamie giddens the cast and crew you guys are doing a phenomenal job and i am so honored to review this show because this show always has me at the edge of my seat so let me begin the episode pick the episode starts between um, Stephanie and Evan. They're having dinner, and Stephanie is excited that she got you know Purifoy to cough up two point five um two point five billion in the um in the lawsuit, and Evan is pretty much like yeah, but here it is. You're happy that you're putting thousands of people um, out of work. You know, because due to the fact they had to cough up so much money, you know, definitely they have the downsize. And that just goes to show the Buckhead versus the banks. You know, even though Evan is now living this rich lifestyle, there's still a part of him that's still rooted in the banks. You know, you know, from his father and uh, the fact in, you know, his sister and how he grew up, you know, he hasn't forgot where he's come from. He just got lost. He's just lately been lost in, and um, you know, the rich world, you know, and also having power and prestige. And and pretty much, you know, uh, then uh, Stephanie starts talking about Amara's, you know, case, you know, involving the whole bribery scheme. Um, and then she kind of, and then she kind of makes a joke at Evan. Was like, well, hmm. Well, the way things are going, you know, if Amara really, you know, breaks ground with this thing, your next campaign would be um, federal lockup. And, oh, um, I won't be giving you any um, conjugal visits either. I'm like, this bitch is doing the most. That damn Stephanie's a mess. And then Evan came back and was like, well, maybe she wouldn't come so hard if you stopped throwing yourself at her husband. You know, like a lovesick co-ed. And then all of a sudden she's like, yeah, you don't want to preach. Because, you know, she knows about him and Bella and about Joaquin. Um, and then Evan gets a text that says that it's an emergency. So he tries to kiss her and she immediately just like, mm-mm. Like, she's really in her, in her damn feelings. Um, and then... We see that she gets she um she um she calls someone and it turns out she ends up calling Rashid and lets him know that she wants intel on Daddy Darius. So she's now about to get some intel on her father. So then we see um Perla going to Bella's apartment. Now remember on the last episode we saw Perla stab up the um I thought his name was Peter, but actually his name was Alex. She stabbed up Alex with scissors and yeah, Alex is is pretty much dead. So we see Perla's crazy, snaky ass go into Bella's apartment. She goes through her shit and finds um, a stack of money. And then all of a sudden, as soon as she's trying to leave, Bella comes in and she's like, you know, what the hell are you doing here? Um, and she was like, oh, I thought I left my charger here and all that shit. She's like, why the hell do you keep lying to me? Like, what is the hell is going on? You know, so Bella is, like, concerned, but then we see Perla's real nasty, trifling ass really come out in that scene. 
And the next thing you know, they're going back and forth, and she no and Bella um Bella notices that Perla has blood on her. And she was saying that um the guy Alex, he tried to rape me and all this shit, which is somewhat on the truth because in the way he was forcing himself onto her, but in a, but in a way, he only did it because he had the goods on her ass that she was the one that really orchestrated Joaquin's kidnapping along with Eddie. So, you know, she's saying that, you know, I'm going to call Evan. And then she literally knocks the phone out of Bella's hand. It's like, no, you can't call. You can't call him. You can't call anybody. And then we should start seeing this real controlling nature come out of Perla and I'm just like looking at Bella, like, what the fuck? Do you not realize that this girl is not your friend? I mean, hell, with friends like Perla, who the hell needs enemies? Because she was just doing the most. And then the next thing you know, when she tried to get her phone, the two of them started fighting. And Perla literally takes a bottle and cracks it over Bella's head and knocks her out. And I'm like, wow. That shit was that shit was crazy. We see that Stephanie meets up with this guy Mitch, who's one of the senior partners at um Carlo Perkins. Perkins, and Mitch agrees that yeah, we definitely need a new face and all of that. But you know, your father has a lot of support. You know, it's not just gonna be, it's not gonna be easy. But she, but she pretty much says that look, I I want what I want you to do is get you know all the senior partners to support this move of me becoming the new the new head of Carlisle Perkins. And don't worry, I have an insurance policy for my father that'll make sure this goes through. We've known from the very first episode she wants to be the head of the firm and her father won't let it go. And if we now that we know how Stephen Carlisle moves, we see why. He's just as, you know, um, hungry and driven as she is. So, then we see that um, Rondell is still working at Thelma's, and yet again, Darcia comes in there with her messy, trifling ass, starting some shit. And pretty much, Dar D Rondell was like, I thought I told your rusty black ass to not come in here no more. She's like, well, me being co-owner, co I can come and go as I please. And, and she was like, yeah, and I'm going to be consulting my lawyer. And, of course, Garcia threw back, like, you mean Evan Jr.'s lawyer? Because, shoot, your collar, gr your, your, um, your collar green peddling ass can't even afford to keep your locks um tight. I was like, really, bitch? That was real cold. I was like, damn, Garcia, you really went there. And then she starts getting real loud and saying, like, Really? How could you say that? Why are you doing this after everything that my uncle senior done to put into this place and you would do this? Y'all just really trying to cut me out, huh? You know, after all, uncle senior went through and the fact that he was crazy. And Rondell was like, no, he was not crazy. He had TIA. Um, and then she's like, how could you live with yourself, Rondell? And Rondell was like, well, you only have three seconds to live if you don't get your ass up out of here. One two and then and i was just like girl rondell why won't you beat darcia's ass because she is doing the most but i think the reason why rondell has not fucked her up is because she still has that place in her heart for her favorite cousin you know darcia rightfully deserves a good old-fashioned ass whooping because she's doing the most um, Amara and Titus, they discuss, you know, the $2.5 billion settlement and how it set um, Purifoy Pharmaceuticals back. Um, but he said that the settlement is a good thing because um, we're not bankrupt, but at least with that being out, it protects us from future lawsuits coming our way. Um, but then, like, you know, um, due to the fact that, you know, they, they paid this up, and now that this whole thing is public, now the Department of Justice is going to get in, and they say, we're going to have to look at their business handlings and all that. And Titus begins to have a change of heart. And I kind of saw a change in him, and I said, Kendrick Ross is a good actor because he kind of showed 
that that emotional state in Titus once that whole thing was going on between Stephen and Hunter, how they was going back and forth, we started to see a change in Titus. Like he's really starting to see the light of how Purifoy really operates and also how Hunter really feels about black people. So it's like, and he was saying that, you know, I may, because I was making so much money from Purifoy that I knew certain things weren't right and I just looked the other way. Then he was saying that they've made millions of dollars getting black people addicted to opioids. And I defended them. You know, and he was like, I want to make this right. Because I'm saying, even though Titus is like a shrewd lawyer, but he really at the heart is a good guy. And I have to say, Titus is definitely one of my favorite characters because he at least tries to do the right thing. Um... So, if anything, Amara's like, so this is what you're trying to do. You want to take down Purifoy, um, you're, you want to take down Purifoy your damn self. But, she's, but she lets him know that she's with him 100%. Then, we go back to Bella's apartment. She, after being knocked out, she's now tied up. Perla is literally drinking alcohol and pouring alcohol all around her on her and everything and then she says wake up you stupid whore and she and then all of a sudden Perla starts letting everything out she was like you know uh and then she was like you know my whole life is ruined all because of you you know Eddie died because of you and all of that and she was like oh my god you did that and she was like yeah, you know, Eddie was the only man that cared about me, and he's now dead because of you. And Bella is literally pleading for her life because she's throwing alcohol on her, and she knows she's about to set her ass on fire. And really what she wants to do is kill her so she can take her identity because the bitch is so crazy and so and has low self-love um, for herself. She wants to be Bella. And... And, and even Bella got to the point where she's like, I can give you money. I need your money. I already got it. Shit. Um, and she was like, I trusted you. And she says that, yeah, you trusted me and now you're going to burn for it. I was like, oh, this bitch got to die. Because Perla, as I said, with friends like that, who the hell needs enemies? And here it is. She's Bella is screaming and crying. And she's about to, um, she got the um, cigarette um, lighter. And soon as the damn match was about to lit. She was about to throw it. And just in the nick of time, Evan shows up with his goon. The goon literally jumps and tackles her like they playing football and shit. He just flew across the screen. It was like, douche. I was like, oh, shit. Like that right in the nick of time. And pretty much got, you know, they, um, Evan pretty much untied Bella, and Bella was just broken the fuck down, and she could not stop crying. But shout out to Erica Page, who plays Bella. She did some damn good acting in this scene, because it just goes to show she realized that, one, Evan really does love her, but also that this person who she thought was her friend was really her enemy in disguise, and she didn't even see it coming. After you was trying to help her career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good riddance to that bitch. Anyway. Uh, so. Then we get a scene with um, Rondell and Luleen. She, Rondell gives Luleen the engagement ring that Senior was going to give her the night that he was going to propose. But he got murdered before he was able to get to her. Um, and pretty much Luleen starts saying that. What? was going on with him that he would give two-thirds of his business to some niece and she was like doesn't that seem odd to you and and you know Rondell was like yeah because he changed his will months ago and was he even in the right mind then she was like well yeah he was kind of iffy around that time but once I got him to take his medication you know he was good as new so, I so pretty much is looking like when he did that will and testament, he really wasn't in his right state of mind. Um, but then Luleen lets it be known that 
he was receiving a lot of prank calls, but he would never mention who the calls were coming from. So, and it was cool seeing Luleen and Rondell come together because they're now more closer than ever because the death of Senior really brought them close. And it was great to see that, you know, Luleen is still going to be a part of her life. And she's going to be a part of hers, that they're going to support each other. And what she ends up doing is that uh, Rondell gets Senior's phone. She figures out his code. And she starts playing messages of Darcia prank calling Senior, saying that, you know, stop ignoring me, old man, and all this shit. And I was like, oh, this bitch got to go. Darcia has got to fucking go. Um, Evan gets word that, you know, Perla Ortega has been handled. Um, then we get a scene with Karen and Amara. They were supposed to do a press conference, but because Evan beat them to it by, you know, by making a statement to the press and the fact that um, Daphne, uh, you know, changed, uh, didn't implement um, Greg Peters in, into her confession... They're pretty much like at square one yet again. She says, but Daphne's testimony, that's everything. And she was saying that, you know, Daphne is not a liable witness because here it is. She was supposed to give me everything and she didn't. She was part of this whole operation. And she was saying that, look, I need more time. I'm on this. I can really make this happen. And she says, yeah, you're going to have to. And, and I'm like, I agree, because Daphne is a lousy witness. And at this point, we don't even know if Daphne's still alive. But um, but she says that, you know, I just need more time so I can get more credible evidence to really take them all down. But then before she leaves, Karen apologizes to her about Damian Collins. She was saying, I'm sorry I didn't see that coming. And she's like, it's okay, because neither did I. And as soon as Amara goes in her car... Here come Damian Collins with his crazy ass, like, we have unfinished business. And she pulled out the damn pepper spray and wasn't afraid to use it. And he's like, look, 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 look. It's like your husband has turned you against me. You know, your, conf your feelings are confused. You know, he done made you believe that I'm such this bad person. She's like, I am not confused about my husband. And you need to keep my husband's name out your mouth. And he, and he, and she, and he was like, well, I, I know you, Amara. To me, you're still that same church girl from Texas. And, you know, I know you're confused right now, but I know in your heart you still love me. And it's okay, I'll wait. I'm a patient man. And she's like, you really need help. And he's like, you still care about me. And then he, um, and then he leaves, but then I'm like, girl, you remember he did say he's willing to do anything to get you back, so... Titus' ass is in danger as because Damien is unhinged and he's unleashed. So anything is possible. Um, so then we see that Titus is at Purifoy going through some old files and we find out that he's also been reaching to former employees that used to work with Purifoy to get information about some of the, you know, some of the things that's been going on in the company because Titus now is ready to expose Purifoy from the root. Um, but then Lori walks in and at first she's being real nice and real coy, but then Lori is kind of giving us look like, why the hell you up in here looking at these old records and shit? What's really going on? And she's kind of giving him that side eye, you know, you know, so why are you digging in these old boxes? Mm, so, cause Lori knows that 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 her that, that her family is grimy as shit, and then they've done a bunch of illegal shit to make the millions that they have. So she's definitely looking at Titus. Oh yeah, uh -huh, something ain't right here, and I gotta keep my eye on your ass. You know, she was kind of giving that vibe, but was really playing nice with it. Then we get a scene with Stephanie and her mother Irene, smooth criminal. Yeah, that's my little thing for Irene, because Irene's smooth as shit. Um, and pretty much she, um, you know, Irene was like, so why did you call me here, Stephanie? Are you are you here to talk about Evan and that dressmaker? And she was like, no, I'm talking about, I'm here to talk about Daddy. You know, Daddy has made some 
I, you know, has made some questionable actions. And then she mentions that daddy was laundering money for the, for the um, Petrovic family through her Sam Perkins Foundation, which is named after, um, you know, Irene's father. Um, and of course, Miss Irene was unfazed because she knew. And she was like, look, honey, we were in dire straits. You know, the firm was in dire straits and so was the foundation. And laundering money was just part of the deal. Um, you know, um, and she says that, look, your father just did what he had to do, just like you. And she goes to, I am nothing like my father. And she's like, yes, you are. You have his ruthless drive and you have my quiet cunning. I'm like, yeah, because I said smooth criminal. Yeah, that's Irene. And and pretty much, um, so what do you think I should do, Mom? And she said that, um, well, if you're going to use that information, and if I raised you right, which I know I have, he won't know what hit him. And then all of a sudden, when she went to go hug Stephanie, she had that damn look like, Bitch, your mother is one of these, is, again, smooth criminal. You can't trust shit, Miss Irene throws, because she is very cool, comma, collected, but she is a thug from hell, and you don't see, you don't see her shit until she exposes it, and then you're kind of like, what the hell? I'm saying, she's more smoother than damn, than damn Steven. Shoot, she really is the thug of the family. But then we um we get a scene where um where after that we get a scene in Steven's office. He's talking to somebody saying that, look, you came to me to help you secure your inheritance. It wasn't the other way around. We come to find out he was talking to Darcia's ass. Dar he's behind Darcia being there, and he's been advising her ass the whole damn time. And I was like, oh shit. So they go back and forth and they discuss, you know, due to um, Senior's mental capacity, that could get the um, the will overturned. And then she said, then all of a sudden, Darcia gets all in her feelings and was like, I turned down $500,000 because you said I could get more, I could, I could get better money. You know what? What's this bullshit you feeding me? I ain't going home empty handed. And he's like, well, first of all, honey, you need to watch who the fuck you talking to. But I will let you know this. If you play this right, uh, not only will you get paid, but finally my client will get Thelma's place. So they're still trying to take Thelma's place right from under Rondell, and they're using her fucking cousin to do it. And the whole damn time, Stephen is the master with the puppet strings, is, and that's what has been guiding Darcia's simple ass the whole time. I was like, yo, that shit is bananas. Even after Caesar, Caesar ain't even calling his grave and you still on the bullshit. Because at the end of the day, Steven is about that coin. His bottom line is green and he don't... So then we see that Titus meets up with this guy named Ben who actually used to work for Purifoy um, Pharmaceuticals in the 90s. And he says, tell me about um, Fallburn County, Michigan. You know... And pretty much, they come to, he said, when I looked into the inv um, the inventory logs, there was enough pills, enough to cover the, si the state of New York that was sent to this small town. And, you know, Ben says that, yeah, you know, sales are sales, you know, Pure Ford Pharmaceuticals is not a nonprofit. And, you know, Limadol, you know, was flooding the market and it was a lot of money to be made. And this went on for about three years. And he says that it's about time somebody pulled the covers back. And he was like, let me know what's going on. Uh, ben whispers something to him. And he was, and he tells Ben, you don't know how much you helped me. Because they were at Thelma's um, place. He had bought him some oxtails and everything. Paid for his food. And as soon as he left, he called somebody. was like, we got have a problem. I'm like, who the fuck did he call? Was it Hunter? Was it Lori? Like, what's really popping? I'm thinking Lori may have had something to do with it. But we just have to see. Because Lori, Lori is definitely 
a, a person you gotta watch as well. So then we get a so then we get um a scene with Steven and Stephanie. Stephanie decides to because you know she can't keep shit to herself. She decides to expose him for the money laundering and that she's gonna be taking over the firm from here on out. And you know, Steven was like, you know what? I'm gonna walk out of this house, you know, the house that the trust fund that I gave your ungrateful ass paid for, and then you had the nerve to sit up here and blackmail me. And she was like, well, daddy, the problem is you got greedy and you got sloppy, you know. And he lets her know that, did you think this shit through? Did you think that maybe taking me down is going to take down your mother as well? And she's then also she announced, well, mom and I have decided to throw you a retirement party at the compound. And you will announce that you're stepping down immediately and you'll name me as your successor. Um... And pretty much, uh, and she says, and if you don't do that, you know, the truth will get out, the truth will get out, and everybody will know about it. And people will know the truth about you, that you're nothing but a common mob lawyer. I'm like, I was like, girl, Stephen looked like he wanted to slap the living hell out of Stephanie. And I thought he was going to do it, because he was, um, so then she gets a text from um from uh Kareem that the mayor just left Bella um Be um Bella's um house so she's like uh so so he so he so you know Steve so Stephen is like you really think I'm just gonna let you steal my firm and then Stephanie was like my firm and see you at the party I got something to take care of and she leaves and he's like oh this is not over not by a long shot. And then we get us. Then we see that Rondell and Evan are talking, and we hear all of the prank calls that that Darcia was leaving senior. And I'm like, oh, this bitch is evil, you know. And they said that you know it's gonna be hard to prove that you know that he signed it under um, undue influence, but due to the fact that he was having these health issues, we can probably contest it in that way, and. And then he's like, and then Rondell was like, well, what if that doesn't work? And then he's like, we'll find another way. And she was like, you know, you don't care about Thelma's place as much as me. So why are you doing this? And he's like, you my sister, girl. And I'm not going to let that money grubbing bitch of a cousin of ours take that away from you. And I was like, that's real. You know, and that was a good moment. Then we get a scene with Evan and Bella. She's making dinner. She's grateful that he saved her life. And we can tell that, you know... She was definitely shaken up, but everything is cool. And she asked about what's going on with Perla because earlier he got a call that Perla was taken care of, but they didn't go into detail. And he said, the better, like, the less you know, the better. And he kind of told her the same thing. And she was like, you like, like, how can you say that? I mean, Bella knows, Perla knows everything. And, and like, she kidnapped our son and she killed Alex. Like, pretty much she told her that, you know, you worry too much, you know. And she's like, don't you get tired of the hiding and covering up? And she's like, our relationship always destroys everything it touches. And she's like, well, it didn't with Joaquin. Joaquin is the best of us. And next thing you know, she thanked him for saving her life. And one thing led to another. He, They start getting wild and freaky up in the kitchen, you know. And while that's going on, we see these nurses with these needles... And we come to see that Perla is strapped down and they inject her with something and Perla's dead instantly. So we now know, yeah, Perla is dead. And I'm so happy for it because Perla was a piece of shit. She, her ass needed to go. And she was doing too damn much. So then we see that Steven meets up with this lawyer named Marty. Now, Marty was the lawyer that was the executor of Senior's Will. He pretty much lets her know that because she says that he actually had a mini stroke during one of their sessions. So she knew that he wasn't in full physical health when doing this, you know, and he was saying that I want you to announce that he was a full mind and body when he when he decided to sign that will. Um you know, and she and he says, as far as the medical procedure, I'll take care of that. And she was like, but, so you mean to tell me that, 
you know, that you want me to announce that that he was well when I know he wasn't? She, she's like, I could get disbarred. And he was like, yeah, or you can become a junior partner at Carlisle Perkins and you'll be a rich woman. And I'm saying the love of money is the root of all evil. There you go. And notice I said the love of money because a lot of these people on this show love money and it drives them to do sinister and evil shit. So we got that popping off. And, you know, and pretty much she says that I, I'm the one really running things at this firm. Don't believe what you're hearing. You know, the, the power still in my hands. So we already see that. Yeah, that damn Steven is on some shit. And I was just mad as fuck. Like, yo. You still trying to take this shit from Rondell. <clears throat> Thelma's place is all she has, and y'all still trying to take that shit. Because, you know, that Petrovic family is ruthless as hell. So, then, we see that after, you know, Bella comes into the living room after getting, getting you know, freshly dicked down by Mayor Lancaster. Turns out... She goes in the living room. Stephanie is sitting, sitting there, sipping a, sipping her tea, and she's like, "How the hell did you get in here, Stephanie?" She was like, "I told the doorman the truth. I own the place." And then she was like, "Did you give Evan a good kiss goodbye?" And and then all of a sudden, she goes in on Bella, and she was like, "Oh yeah," and how you were having sex with my husband behind my back for years. And then stealing money from my children to buy this badly, uh, badly, monstrously, uh, disgusting little loft. And then here it is, that little boy you always ponder off to your to your waitress mother is Evan's little bastard. And she's like, don't call my son that. She's like, I'll call him whatever I want, you deceitful little wretch. And she gets to the point where... She lashes the fuck out, but I'm like the nerve of your ass, Stephanie. Because <clears throat> hell, Stephanie, you fucking around with Greg Peters and shit. Um, and she's like, I trusted you, and you enjoyed making a fool out of me. And she's like, no, it's nothing like that. And she's like, you know what? Your loft, your company, and your little reputation is over. And little Julio, I might just adopt his ass. After all, I am his stepmother. And she's like, don't talk about my, like, look, look, you can say what you want, but don't come for my son. She slapped the shit out of Bella and was like, and I was, and I was like, yeah, consider your life over. And we see that Bella was shooken up because I'm like, yeah, bitch, the wife now knows all about you. And the wife got more power and entitlement than you do. So... Afterwards, Bella gets in her car. I mean, I'm sorry. Stephanie gets in her car because she's emotionally fired up and shit. Only for Damien's crazy ass to get in the car with her. They go back and forth and everything. And he shows her the video footage of her and Greg having sex in her office. And then he was like, wow, I didn't know the Ice Queen was so flexible. And then pretty much saying that, wow. And then to think about it, your father had a thug had um, hired a thug to take the fall of your father-in-law's murder and your mommy, you know, and you in conversations with your mommy, your daddy been laundering dirty money through your mom's foundation. And so it's like he, because the fact that he's been listening, he's, he's got cameras in our thing. He was watching, he was pretty much watching her like he was watching um, um, Amara and Titus. So it's like the shit that she dealt out, she's now getting back. Her chickens have kind of come home to roost in this situation. And she's saying, how much to make this in you go away? And he was like, well, $20 million in a private plane. And she was like, what if I refuse? She says, then I'll, and he said, I'll expose you all for the crooked Carlisles you really are. And she just screamed. And I'm like, as I said, bitch, you met your match. He's just as crazy, just as conniving, and just as sinister and treacherous as you are. <clears throat> and he pretty much is loony and cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so he's worse. So then we get a scene with um, Titus and Amara. Um, Titus is on the phone with Amara. He's getting her some cupcakes and all of that. And then the next thing you know, he steps on the road and a damn car just runs right into his ass. 
And I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, because I'm thinking it could be Damien or Lori could be behind it. But either way, it just so happens he gets run over by a car once he really starts finding out the truth about Purifoy Pharmaceuticals. But then we also got Looney Boy who's still in love with Amara and wants Titus out the way. So next week's the season finale. I can't wait. Um, if I missed anything, get down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, everybody, take care.